This house breathed a sigh of relief when I found it. Embossed paper skin worn thin and peeling from water damage. Revealing scarred yellow plaster patched with pink. Every wall, every door, and every light switch had been whitewashed with a level of carelessness that slumped in thick trailing drips towards the floor, meeting pitted wooden boards in some loose acknowledgement of a handshake. Upstairs had been patched with mismatched carpet remnants, as if to smother the life out of these fading remains. But it was obvious, in every crack, every split, every leaking pipe and loosened brick that there was still life here. I'd hesitated on the edge of the pavement alone for a while, hand clutching a single key, but three doors faced me, one without lintel, one chained to a breeze block alley, and one that would later lock me on the outside, perhaps to keep me from the damage I would also cause this house. Stained living room walls spoke in gurgled tones of poorly patched pipes. A story relayed by the bowed bathroom ceiling as it paid its respects to the floor, before finally retiring on a bed of worn, striped linen. In the yard, seemingly immortal shrubbery invaded the boundaries, so full of life that any sense of control that I had been lured into from their frostbitten roots was quickly dispersed at the first summer's day as they arrogantly crept up to the foot of my makeshift brick fire pit. <laughs> Trees sprouted between the wrinkles of the concrete. Uneasily, this house was forced to welcome my occupancy, and all was repaid with a crack from the sledgehammer in my hand, and on lifting that first slab, I saw 